Good afternoon YouTube and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we'll be reviewing Sanji's 2016 Yamaha R1 and not just any R1, the special edition Kenny Roberts. Now I do have to apologise at the start as this is not going to be the first ride. We did go out a couple of weeks ago, was absolutely blown away by it and the poxy audio failed on the camera. But the good news is we've got new equipment on board today and we're going to see what it's like out in the Cotswolds or maybe AKA Mexico. So stay with us while we go out on this review. So as mentioned, this is the 60th anniversary edition, also known to me as the Kenny Roberts with the color scheme. Now the beauty of this bike over the UK model is you get the striking yellow paint scheme. You also get the factory Acropovic silencer. Now normally with the catalyst still fitted, they're relatively tame in terms of the noise, but Sanj has fitted the titanium decat leak pipe, which honestly, it's the only inline four with the cross plane crank that literally sounds like a MotoGP bike on the road, especially with that quick shifter. It sounds absolutely incredible. And like I say, in today's video, you'll get to experience all its glory. So finally out on the R1, which again isn't technically true, finally time out on video. So as we mentioned, oh, unfortunately I had some issues with the audio, I wasn't happy with it. I wanted to shoot it again and give you guys a proper good quality experience on it. The thing is so loud as well, but the sun is shining and we are over in the Cotswold, so let's get it on. So we'll get the basics out of the way first. 1,000cc, inline four, cross plane crank, which gives it that unique firing order, almost very V4 sounding. Standard 197 horsepower and 83 foot pounds of torque at the flywheel. I would expect this one to make a little bit more power as it's got the DCAT link pipe and the Acropovic silencer, which as we mentioned comes standard. So those that are familiar with the channel, obviously we reviewed Matt's early generation R1, back when it was on carburetors, back when you could do miles and it was comfortable. This thing feels aggressive. The riding position is a big step up now. You really feel like your bum's in the air. Not as comfortable, obviously, as the older ones, but... <laughs> Jesus. The gearbox is absolutely sweet, especially combined with the quick shifter. Now, on this generation of R1, you only get the quick shift up. You don't get the quick shift or auto blipper as it's known on the way down, but. Ah. So before we get in to the twisty stuff, let's do a bit of a background on the bike. So released in 2014, running all the way up to the modern times, you have the base version, and then you have this version, which comes with the Acropovic silencer, and in this wonderful Kenny Roberts 60th anniversary color scheme. And then if your budget allows, there is the Pinnacle R1M, which comes with the carbon fiber bodywork, Olin's adaptive damping, all the bells and whistles basically. And these are starting now for the early generations at around £10,000. The Kenny Roberts, twelve to £13,000, and the R1Ms up to about £15,000. So what's the engine like? Obviously, the, probably the most exciting thing of being on a sports bike. Well, right now, if I roll down to 3,000 RPM, we're in fifth gear, roll on heavy. It goes, but it's certainly not a torque monster. But where, as you probably saw earlier, you get this thing above 9, 10,000 RPM, and it is an absolute monster. All the power is at the top. It takes me right back to the little 600s in terms of the way you've really got to rev them to get everything out of them. If you're used to riding a V-twin, like I've just come off the RCAR, you've really got to drop the gears to get into the power. So 
So as we mentioned, it is quite an aggressive riding position compared to the earlier stuff. They've certainly upped the game. The rear sets, and I'm six foot two, I feel like I'm right in the bike in terms of my feet being locked up high. But it's not uncomfortable. I wouldn't say it's at the point where I've ridden previously things like Ducatis and stuff where you need arm operation after more than 10 minutes on it. Man, it handles like a little 600. It is bonkers. That's what I will say with technology. Things have got more powerful, generally lighter now with all the assist, but the way this thing turns, it's just, it's unbelievable, right? Even up to about 2009, 2010, if I got on a 1,000cc bike, yes, they would ride incredible, but you'd still expect them to be a little bit heavier, a bit more lethargic than something like a 600, which is all about screaming it and throwing it around. Whereas now, you can see why the 600 market's dead because these are just unbelievable. So an interesting story with these, back in 2014 when it was released, man, I was at the bike show and I just bought my first property and I sat on one and I said, one day I'm gonna own one of these. And I'd always gone to them, gone back, thought, ah, oh, now's not the right time. They're still depreciating. I'll let them come down a little bit more. And then Sanj bought one and uh, I said to him, you know, I really want to ride it. I don't want to ride it at the same time in case I love it. And man, I've got to be honest with you, I love it. It is, it is a James bike, loves to rev, sounds absolutely fantastic and just goes like absolute stink. So on board, what have we got? Well, what I do find surprising, especially a bike when this was out compared to the market, is how small the dash is. So you've got quite a big surround, but the actual clock itself is small. Now there's a conveniently bit of black tape that blew out in the wind there onto the clocks, unfortunately, but it's got everything you need on there. Gear indicators ideal. And to be honest with you, I only really like them for when I'm on the motorway so that I know I'm in top gear. The rest of the time, you just ride to the power curve. You've got a throttle. I mean, it tells you how much throttle you're winding on, how much braking you're putting on, how much everything basically but you don't need any of this gubbins down here on the right what do i want to know oh, i'm pulling the brake lever essentially as long as the bike stops it's doing its job now on the bottom left hand side you've obviously got all the fancy rider modes as well on there we're in a2 at the moment so a1 being the most powerful The box is superb as well. Even without the quick shifter, it's super slick. <laughs> the bangs as well. If you want to sound like a MotoGP rider coming down the road and something that you can actually still use, this is the bike. Oh man, what a bit of kit. So reliability. I mean, there's still not an old bike, I guess, to really see where the gremlins lie. They did have an issue with the early models where unfortunately they had a severe gearbox failure between first and second that if you were on track flat out and you ended up punching through the box, your whole box could fail. I'm not sure what it was, but it was recalled by Yamaha. So if you are in the market for one, for me, I'd rather be buying a 2016 one that's had the recall done at the factory rather than some apprentice technician ripping the motor out and stripping it back apart. But other than that, there's no real known issues with them. Once they're past that point, they're pretty solid. Obviously, like we said, you could take it on the road, you can take it on the track. That's really where it's gonna excel itself. It's just that performance. It just wants you to be blasting the absolute top end out of it everywhere. And again, if we roll down now to like 3000 RPM, fourth gear, roll on. It picks up. It's definitely not a slow bike, but it's, it's such a different bike for when you're at 10,000 RPM. It is just an absolute animal. So the question for my regular subscribers, should I buy one? Oh man, there's no denying I will own one of these at one point. There's a big part of me that wants the R1M because it comes with a plush O-Lins and 
they didn't blow me away in the car but Olin's I've had on the bikes in the past have just been absolutely unbelievable to ride with on the road superb absorption of the bumps so predictable and even with this KYB suspension that's on here now by no means is it bad maybe a little bit firm for the road use but it is just on the standard settings it hasn't been set up it's probably something I should mention and I don't think it'll bother 99% of you who watch this is we've been out today I've been on the KTM RCAR Sandra's been on this our friend's been on the Multistrada and out of the three bikes that we've come out to the Cotswolds on which is obviously commuting mileage when we was on the motorway having a little bit of spirited fun on the back roads the R1 has actually been the worst on fuel I don't know what the mile per gallon is but I'd say looking at when we refilled up a good 10 15 percent dearer on the fuel which is strange I know it's the most powerful of the bunch but being a thousand cc bike and modern with the euro emissions I kind of expected it to be the best so we're now around town this is where the real test for a sports bike comes in the throttle is snatchy down low like that might be because I'm in the aggressive power mode like right now if I you can see it properly bucks it makes you look proper stupid if you're aggressive with the throttle around town the riding position again becomes more noticeable around town which is obviously a normal trait of a sports bike when you've got an aggressive riding position it's not going to be comfortable man it does ride so sweet way it turns in <laughs> so that's one thing I will mention the brakes on this are not bad for a road bike I can't imagine they'd be great on track. There's enough here for the riding we've been doing today that I've not felt the need to go more than my one or two fingers on the lever. But especially compared to the Brembo monoblocks that I've got on the RCA, it's a notable disadvantage of how much better the brakes are on the RCA. And again, that RCA is a 2009 model. So it is a little bit disappointing that Yamaha made such a fantastic package with this bike and just let the brakes down a little bit now it has got ABS in there as well all the normal assist anti wheelie slide control there are people who will be able to explain this much better than me this is more of just a, a review of a wide boy from Staines's first experience on what an R1 is like to be on and it's such a shame the audio didn't come out on the first one I'm having a wicked time on it today but I was honestly blown away by it absolutely blown away by it when I first took it out just even today the things you can get away with on this bike it's not a round town bike it's not something you'd want to commute on but get this thing wound up and oh, man does it feel right so i hope you guys enjoyed the review of the 2016 yamaha r1 what a bit of kit a big thanks to sand for letting me take it out today in the cotswolds if you did enjoy the video make sure you give the channel a like and subscribe until next time thanks for watching